안녕하세요. 꾸준한 영어 테드쌤입니다. 오늘은 어, 버니큘라 지금 챕터 2 100번 읽어야 되는데요. 어, 중간에 한번 처음부터 3가까지 제가 음, 읽었었기 때문에 끝까지 한번 읽고 나서 챕터 2또 들어가도록 하겠습니다. 버니큘라 챕터 3 다음 챕터 4 이제 챕터 4부터 읽어보겠습니다. Chapter 4. A cat prepares. I almost didn't make it to my meeting with Chester that night. Toby had a feast in his room. It was Friday night, and on Friday night, Toby goes to stay up and read as late as he wants to. So, of course, he needs lots of food to keep up his strength. Good food like cheese crackers, chocolate cupcakes, my very favorite, the kind with cream in the middle, mmm, pretzels and peanut butter sandwiches. The last I cannot abide because my mother always gets stuck. Chocolate cupcakes with cream in the center, however, are another story. This particular evening, I stationed myself on today's stomach. Usually, I'm a little more subtle, but having missed out on the bacon at breakfast, I was not about to take any chances on the chocolate cupcakes with the cream in the center. Toby knew what I was after, but sometimes he thinks he's funny, and he plays a little games with me. Hi, Harold. I'll bet you'd like a peanut butter sandwich, wouldn't you? Here, you have this one. That's left over from yesterday. Where I eat this boring old chocolate cupcake, which is nice and fresh and has cream in the middle. Okay, Harold. Ha ha. My sides are splitting. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you wanna? Don't you want the peanut butter sandwich? All right. I'll put it away for another night. Oh, here's something you might like. It's a green sour roll from that candy dish that was stuck to my socks. Would you like that, huh, pal? Oh boy, the kid is really hot tonight. Oh no, huh? Well, I'll give you one of my cupcakes. But I know how much you hate chocolate. Would a little drooling on your stomach help convince you otherwise? Oh, you like chocolate. Okay then, you can have both of them. One thing I have to say about Toby. Although he's got a rotten sense of humor, he's a nice kid, naturally, once I had to earn, I'd eaten both cupcakes, which took approximately 4 seconds. I felt obliged to hang around and let Toby know I was grateful. What better way than to share a few of his cheese crackers? Well, Harold, Toby said sometime later, we've had quite a party. Oh, um, but I have to go to sleep now. I can't keep my eyes open, so I'll have to wear. I I have to wait until tomorrow to find out what happens in the next chapter. This is a good book, Harold. It's called Treasure Island, and it's by a man named Robert Louis Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson. It's kind of hard reading, though. I have to keep looking the big words up in the dictionary. So it's taking me a long time to get through it. I've always had trouble with the words myself. Half the time they don't mean what I think they are going to, and then, even when I do find out what they mean, I forget the next day anyway. You might say that I am smart, but just not the scholarly type. But it's a really good story, Toby con continued. It's all about a pirate, and his little boy, this little boy just like me. No dogs, no dogs, and a parrot, Harold, a parrot. What's a parrot? Is there anything about a chocolate cake? That's my idea of treasure. Well, good night, Harold. If you're gonna sleep here, you'll have to get off my stomach, because it's a little full to the right now. Good night, Toby. I curled up at the foot of the bed. <laughs> I called up at the foot of the bed, but I couldn't sleep trying to figure out what a par parrot was. 
I thought it might be a lady pirate. Since the words sounded something like, but then again, I thought it might be an umbrella. Chester would know, I thought, so I went downstairs to ask him. Well, you certainly took your time, Chester snapped as I sauntered casually into the room. I finished my book half an hour ago. Where were you? It so happens I was discussing great words of literature with Toby. Since when is a Twinkies rapper considered a great work of literature? I decided to ignore that. Unfortunately, several chocolate clumps fell from my mouth to the floor at precisely that moment. As a matter of fact, I said, trying, valic trying valiantly to regain my dignity. We were talking about Treasure Island. Ever, ever hear of it? Ever hear of it? He sneered. I read that when I was a kitten. Oh. Oh, then, tell me, Chester, what is your parrot? Chester looked at me scornfully. A parrot, he said. Is a tropical gy gigantical bird, older citrus forms that has a sour, a st stout, curved, hooked bill, is often crested, brightly variegated, and an excellent mimic. In other words, Harold, a parrot is a little bird with a big mouth. Oh, I said after a moment, I thought maybe it was an umbrella. Did you get so busy discussing parrots without Toby? Did you forget you were going to meet me here? This is important to Harold. I still weren't sure what a parrot was, but I decided that there was not the time to pursue it. Come over here, Chester commanded, indicating his chair. And let me show you this book. I looked at the chair. Chatter was already sitting in it, with a very with a very large book open in front of him. I don't think there's going to be room for both of us, Chatter. I said. Come on, come on, you're wasting time. Just jump up here. I surveyed the scene carefully. I knew I would have to get a running start, since there was just a tiny spot left for me. And I would never be able to fit into it if I pulled myself up slowly. Apparently, I was taking too long for Chester's liking. Uh, will you get up here? He hissed. Okay, if that's what you want, I ran and jumped onto the chair, landing with a great kerplop. Chester, where are you? I cried. I couldn't see anything but the back of the chair. I'd forgotten to turn myself around. I'm here. Uh, you great off. I turned my head. What are you doing on the floor? I asked. You knocked me off the chair. Now just stay put. I'm coming back up. I moved to the back of the chair, and the Chester landed on the floor front. Now, let's see, he said. We both have to see the book. You come over here, and I'll move this way. I don't know if you've ever watched a cat try to decide where to sit, but it involves a lot of circling around, sitting, getting up again, circling some more, thinking about it, lying down, standing up, bathing a paw or tail and circling. A dog, on the other hand, sits. This looks like a great spot, good spot, a dog will say to himself. He will then lower his body to the spot in question and is usually so secure in his decision that he will fall asleep immediately. Chester took what felt like 20 minutes to settle himself in and just as I was drifting off, the kicks, stare, uh, kicks started. Come on, Harold. Get hogging the seat. And wake up. What were you trying to do? 
Take a little catnap, ha ha ha. I yawned. Now, said Chester, turning to the book, let's get down to brass track, brass tacks. What exactly is on your mind? I asked. This book and that rabbit, Chester replied. Now, tell me, Harold, have you noticed anything funny about that tail with that rabbit? No, I said. But I've certainly noticed a lot of funny things about you recently. Think about it, that rabbit sleeps all day. So do I, so do you. Furthermore, he's got funny little sharp teeth. So do I, so do you. Furthermore, he gets in and out of his cage by self. What kind of a rabbit can do that? A smart one, I said. I could do it. We're not talking about you, Harold. We're talking about the rabbit. Now, where did they find him? At the movies. Yes, but what movie? Dracula, I said. So? So, he said quickly. Remember the... Remember the note... Remember the note around his neck? What language was it in? An obscure dialect of the Carpathian Mountain region. I answered smugly. He didn't know everything. Uh-uh, Chester said. But what area of the Carpathian Mountain region? Area? What's an area? I looked at him blankly. Transylvania, he cried triumphantly. And that proves my point. What point? What are we talking about? And don't forget the white tomato. That's most important of all. Of all. But what? This book, said Chester. Disregarding me, tell us, tell us just what we need to know. What? I practically screamed. What does it tell us? What does this book have to do with the binicula? What are you talking about? What's going on here? I can't stand it anymore. Chester regarded me coolly. You're really very excitable, Harold. That's not good for your blood pressure. I put my paws around his throat. Tell me, I said in a low, threatening voice, or I'll, I'll skiz you till you pop. Okay, okay, don't get upset. Now this book tells you everything you've always wanted to know about vampires, but were afraid to ask. Personally, I had never wanted to know anything about vampires, but at the moment, I was afraid to tell that to Chester. I still don't understand what vampires have to do with our little furry friend. One Chester said, Vampires do not sleep at night. They sleep only during the day. The same holds, tr the, the same holds true for this rabbit. Two, vampires can get in and out of locked rooms, but Nicola gets in and out of his locked cage. This was beginning to interest me. Didn't you say something about the refrigerator? That's right. He got the refrigerator open all by, my, all by himself. Three, vampires have long pointed teeth. They are called fangs. Well, don't we have fangs? No, we have canines. That's different. What's different about it? Fangs are more pointed, and the vampires use fangs to bite people on the neck. Yuck, who'd want to do that? Vampires would. That's who. Wait a moment, wait a minute. I saw Mrs. Murnau bite Mr. Murnau on the neck once. Does that mean that's a vampire? Boy, are you dumb? She's not a vampire. She's a lawyer. She bites necks. I don't think that's quite the same thing. No, Bonicola does not bite the people on the neck. At least, not so far. But he does. He does bite the best of it. Oh, on the neck? I asked. Vestibules don't have necks, uh, Harold. Vestibules are like that. It's uh, like a dogs. Dogs don't have brains. Dogs are like that. Oh, yeah, I said. Of course he bites vegetables. All rabbits bite the vegetables. He bites them, Harold, but he does not eat them. That tomato was all white. What, what does that mean? It means that he paints vegetables, I ventured. 
It means that he bites the vegetables to make a hole in them, and then he sucks out all the juices. But what about all the lettuce and carrots that Toby has been feeding him in the in his cage? Aha! Uh -huh. What indeed? Chester said. Look at this. Whereupon he struck he stuck his paw under the chair chair cushion and brought out with a flourish and a st assortment of strange white objects. Some of them looked like an ironed handkerchief, and the others, well, the others didn't look like anything I've ever seen before. What are they? I asked. Chester smiled. Letters and carrots, he said. White letters and carrots. I found them hidden behind his cage. I was august. What did it all mean? Could Chester be right? Was this harmless-looking little ball of fluff really a vampire? Just then, Chester let out a yelp. Look, he said. The cage is empty again. Oh, we are fools. We are fools. We will let him get out of our sight. It's your fault. My fault? You are the one who took uh, 20 minutes to sit down. Well, if you haven't knocked me off in the first place. Wait a minute. Why are we arguing? Let's find the funicular. Just then, we heard a click in the kitchen. Refrigerator, I whispered. Chatter nodded. We jumped it down and moved cautiously to the kitchen door. Shh. Chatter warned unnecessarily as we crept along. Don't make any noise. We don't want him to hear us coming. Obviously, I retorted. The light went out under the door. He must have closed the refrigerator. Chester said, easy now, we pushed the door open. The kitchen was dark. There was not a sound. Psst, Chester. What? I can't see. I can, but I can't see him. He's not here. There was a soft scramble across the rhino room. And we turned just in time to see a little white tail bounce out the door into the living room. Drat, we will miss him. Come on, Harold. Let's see if we can catch up with him. Chatter started toward the door. With Chatter, was that on the floor by the refrigerator? He turned. This new object interested in him more than following Bonicula. Watch out, he said. I'll take care of this. He slunk across the room slowly. Muscles taut, eyes alert. Alert. When he was about six inches away, he stuck out his paw, closed his eyes, and batted at the object tentatively. I don't think that he made any contact. Get closer, I said. Chester's eyes popped out, popped open. Who's the cat here? He asked. I know what I'm doing, and he proceeded to. Bat the air three more times. What is it? I squealed as my throat contracted in fear. I don't know yet, but whatever it is, it's not alive. Oh boy, if I wait for you, we'll be, the, we'll be here all right. I walked bravely to the object and sni sniffed it. Well, asked Chester. Because me. Chester came closer. After a moment of close examination, he gasped. I jumped. I could feel my heart pounding in my, in my chest. Harold Chatter blurted. Blurted. What? What? It's, yes, it's, what is it, Chatter? It's a white zucchini. 자, 오늘은 출근 전에 일단 가볍게 한 번만 읽어보았습니다.